In this video, I'm gonna show you how to do wall jumping. So let's jump right in. First of all, open the player movement script and delete the private boolean called grounded. To replace it, I'm gonna introduce a new method called isGrounded that's gonna return a boolean value. And I'm gonna explain why I did it in a minute. For now, just keep in mind that this method will tell our code if our player is grounded and when it's not. And let's make it return a false value just because I want to get rid of this error. Now, you might have noticed that because we deleted the grounded boolean, we have four errors in our code. To solve this, I want you to go on line 27 and 32 and replace the grounded variable with the isGrounded method. We still have errors on lines 39 and 45, but we can delete those lines altogether. Great, we got rid of all the errors. Now let's start implementing the isGrounded method. To make it work, I'm gonna introduce a raycast hit to the variable, which basically uses raycasting to fire a virtual laser into a certain direction. If it hits an object, then we're gonna have information about that object. If you didn't quite understand it, don't worry, I'm gonna have a visual explanation very soon. As you can see, I called the variable raycast hit and typed in equals physics2d.boxcast. Now's a good time to stop for a second and explain how raycasting and boxcasting works. If you understand this concept well enough, you can skip ahead to this timestamp. Alright, now I will transition back to Unity to make a visual explanation for you. So first of all, I will take the player and drag it to the ground. Now let's see how the Unity documentation explains raycasting. The simplest explanation for this is that we create a virtual line from a point of origin and into a certain direction. This line will also have a length that we determine, and if the line intersects with an object that has a collider on it, it will return true. Otherwise, it will return false. So how does this work in our case? To determine if the player is grounded, we could draw a short ray, starting from the player's feet and going straight down. As you can see, in this case the player will be grounded because the ray intersects the ground glider. But as soon as you jump in the air, the ray will move along with the player and it will no longer intersect the ground object. So this is how ray casting works. You can use it to solve many different problems in Unity, but in this case it's not the perfect solution. And to understand why, you just need to imagine a situation when your player is standing on the edge of a platform. In this situation, the raycast will tell you that the player is not grounded, when in fact it actually is. So that's where box casting comes into play. So box casting works exactly the same as raycasting, but with one exception. It doesn't use a virtual ray to check for colliders, but it uses an entire box, as the name implies. In our case, we will make the box have the same width as the player, which means that we will determine exactly when our player is standing on something and when it's not. And as you will see a bit later in the video, we will use the same technique to make wall jumping work. Okay, time to move back to our code and make it work. First of all, we will need to grab a reference to the Box Collider 2D component that's attached to our player. Once you have that, we can use this Box Collider to specify the origins and the size of our box cast. As you can see in Visual Studio, we need two arguments. First one is the origin of a box, and the second one is the size of it. For the origin, we will use boxcollider.bounce.center property to get the center point of a box collider. And for the size, we will just use boxcollider.bounce.size. The next property is the angle, but we don't want to rotate our box, so we will keep this one at zero. And immediately after, we have the direction. And because I want to check what's underneath the player, we will use vector2.down. Then you have the distance, which symbolizes how far underneath the player you want to position the virtual box. I want to position it only slightly underneath the player, so I will use a small value like 0.1. And the final parameter of this method is a layer mask. To understand how a layer mask works, you first need to understand that in Unity you can use layers to separate objects in different groups. So for example, you can have a layer for the player, for the enemies, for the ground and for the walls. By implementing a layer mask here, we can tell our box cast only to look for colliders in a specific layer and ignore the other ones. So let's type in ground layer, even though this variable is not created yet. Now go to the beginning of a script and create a private layer mask called ground layer. Make sure that the names are exactly the same. When you're done, also put serialize field in front of it. Now when you go back into Unity, select the player object, 
then look at the player movement script you're gonna see a ground layer variable that opens up as a drop down menu and it allows you to select a specific layer for now we don't have a layer for the ground so we need to create one to do this you need to select the ground object in the hierarchy then press on the layer drop down then press on add layer now on the right you should see a bunch of fields just type in ground in one of them now you can select the ground game object again and set the ground layer to it in the top right corner. Now select the player game object, find the player movement script and in the ground layer variable also select the ground layer. Alright, now we can finally finish this by typing in raycast hit dot collider is not equal to no. If you are confused by this statement I can explain it like this. Imagine that the player is in the air and the box cast is trying to see what's underneath the player but there is nothing underneath the player, so the collider will be equal to no, which means that is grounded will return false, so the player is not grounded. And vice versa, when the player is standing on the ground, the collider will not be equal to no, so is grounded is going to return true, which means that the player is grounded in this case. And finally we can go back into Unity and test how this all works. As you can see jumping and running is working perfectly as it did before but the jump feels way too floaty so let's fix it right now. To do this you need to select the player object, find the rigid body 2D component and change the gravity scale from 1 to 2.5. Now you can press play and see if this works for you. If it doesn't you can still play around with the gravity scale but for me it's good enough so moving on to the next step which is wall jumping. First of all we need a similar method to his grounded so I'm just gonna copy and paste it. Then I'm just gonna change his name to be on wall. Now take a look at the box cast method and let's figure out what needs to be changed for it to work. The center and the size of a box will not change. The angle will also remain at zero. The only variable that we need to change is the direction in which the box will be projected. Obviously we cannot project it down anymore because we're not checking for the ground, so we need to project it either left or right, depending on the direction in which the player is facing. To achieve this we're gonna use a new vector2 that has transform.localscale.x as the first argument and 0 as the second argument. The distance will remain 0.1 as it was before, and the layer mask I'm gonna change from ground layer to wall layer because I want to detect a different type of object. But we don't have a wall layer variable so we need to go at the top of a script and create one just as we did with the ground layer. Now if you go back into Unity and select the player object you can see that on the player movement script you have the option to select the wall layer. But we don't have a wall layer yet, we don't even have a wall so let's make sure to create that. I'm going to duplicate the ground object and resize it so it becomes the shape of a wall. When you're happy with the wall size and placement, make sure to select this object, go into the layer menu, create a new layer, then assign this layer to the object. You can also rename this object to wall like I did here. Finally you need to select the player and on the player movement script you need to assign the wall layer. We still don't have a way to see if it actually works so let's just go into the player movement script and print out the value of this method inside the update method. Go back into Unity, press play and keep your console open so you can see the value. As you can see when you stand far away from the wall or you are not facing it, you get a false value but as soon as you turn towards the wall and you get close enough you're gonna see true. Which means that we now have a system that successfully detects when you are attached to a wall. Now we'll just need to figure out how the player will behave in this case. To start off I want to create a new private float called wall jump cooldown. And as you might have figured out this variable will be responsible for creating delays between wall jumps. So you don't get to instantly teleport up the wall. Now that we have this value inside the update method we can create an if statement that checks if wall jump cooldown is smaller than a certain value. In this case I'm gonna use 0.2. Next I will cut the code responsible for jumping and assigning the body's velocity and paste it inside this if statement. I will also put a comment above the if statement so you understand what this is responsible for. Moving on, I will add an if statement that checks if the player is on the wall and is not grounded. And I will make it so in this case the body's gravity is equal to 0 and the velocity of our body is equal to vector 2.0. Which basically means that when the player will jump on a wall he will get stuck and will not be able to fall down. So let's move to Unity and test how this works. 
As you can see the player does indeed get stuck on a wall, but the downside is that when you're trying to move away from the wall you basically levitate, which is a neat effect but not the way I intended it to be. The solution is really simple, after the last if statement that we created, just place an else statement, and inside it just make the body.gravity scale be equal to your initial value. Also I want to place an else statement on line 51 and inside it increment the wall jump cooldown by time.delta time. This will not be used right now, but it will be necessary really soon when we actually want to implement the cooldown between jumps. Now we can go back into Unity and see how our gravity fix works. Go left, jump on the wall, go right, jump off the wall. Perfect. Now we need to make the player be able to climb up the wall, so let's implement it. First of all, let's remove the is grounded condition from the jump if statement and place it directly inside the jump method. And that's because I want to be able to handle the jump differently, and that's depending on whether you are on the ground or on the wall. Place the code that we already have inside the if statement that we just created, and also create an else if statement after that. Inside this else if statement we're gonna check if the player is on the wall and is not grounded, because that's when we actually want to perform our special jump. There's also one small tweak that we still need to do here, and that is moving the if statement responsible for jumping to line 48. Another thing that bothers me is that we cannot adjust the jump power separately from the speed, so this is a mistake I want to fix right now. So let's go to the top of the script, select line 5 and duplicate it by pressing Ctrl D. Then just rename the variable in the second line from speed to jump power. To cap it off, go to the jump method and on line 60 find the speed variable and replace it with jump power. Now if you go back into Unity and select the player object, you're gonna see that it has a jump power field that you can tweak. I'm gonna set mine to 20. And let's play the game and see how it looks right now. Obviously we are jumping too high, but instead of reducing the jump power, I just want to increase the gravity. But this is very subjective, so feel free to play around with the values and find your own combinations. Just remember that to change the gravity scale, you actually have to go into the code and change it on line 47. At the end of the video, I'm gonna make it more intuitive and allow you to change this from the Unity editor. Okay, let's do one last test before moving on. As you can see the jumping feels way better now, at least I like how high the player jumps now and how fast he's falling down. Let's continue. I just noticed that I made a mistake, on line 37 we should actually be checking if the wall jump cooldown is bigger than 02, not smaller. So make sure to fix it now, otherwise you'll have issues. Moving back to our jump method. So when the player is stuck to the wall and is not grounded, when he jumps we want to set the cooldown to zero because we actually want to make him wait a bit before performing the next jump. Next up we need to apply a force to the body of a player that pushes him away from the wall and upwards at the same time. To illustrate this point I made a quick sketch that shows my amazing guard skills. So let's consider this example. The player is stuck to the wall and is facing left. So we need two forces in this case, one that pushes him right and one that pushes him up. And if you consider that the player will be holding down the left key, trying to grab onto the wall again, the final movement will look like this black arrow and the player will keep moving up the wall. In case the player is facing a wall that's on the right, we just need to reverse the force that's pushing him away from the wall. The rest of the concept stays exactly the same. So how do we implement this into code? First of all we need to access the body's velocity and create a new vector 2. Then we need to get the direction in which the player is facing and create a force opposite to it. Which I'm going to achieve by writing down this statement. Let's break it down into pieces so I can clarify what it means. I'm sure that you already know that transform.localScale.x means the scale of a player on the x-axis. And to flip the player in the correct direction, we made this scale be negative when the player is facing left and positive when he's facing right. So this is the first piece of the puzzle. The second one is mathf.sign, which is a function that's pre-built in Unity and it returns the sign of a number. When it gets a negative number, it returns minus one, and when it gets a positive number, it returns one. Which means that this entire statement can either return 1 when the player is facing right or minus 1 when the player is facing left. But if you paid attention you also notice that I put a minus in front of this entire thing. And that's because I want to be able to push the player away from the wall, as I said previously. So that's how we get the direction opposite of a wall. I know this might be a bit confusing, but I hope I explained it decently. 
Now I will multiply this by 3, which is basically the power with which the player will be pushed away from the wall. Feel free to change this value and experiment with the results. Now for the second argument of a vector I will put in 6, which is the force with which the player will be pushed up like I showed you in the sketch. And finally you can go back into Unity and our wall jumping will work. As you can see you can climb up the wall perfectly fine, but if you want to push yourself off the wall in the opposite direction this is still not an option, so we need to implement this. To do it we will need to access the horizontal input inside the jump method. Which means that we need to go to the top of the script and create a new private float called horizontal input. Now we need to go to line 25 and just delete the float keyword in front of horizontal input, which means that this variable is not local anymore and it will be identified with a new float that we created on line 13. Moving back to the jump method now. Inside the else if statement we want to put another if statement that checks if the horizontal input equals to zero. Then make an else statement right after it and take the body.velocity code and place it right underneath the else statement. Wall jump cooldown equals to zero needs to be executed in either case, so just leave it at the end. Inside the first if statement when the horizontal input equals to zero, we're also gonna tweak the body's velocity. But in this case I'm gonna apply a greater force on the x-axis, that's why I'm gonna put 10 here, and on the y-axis I'm actually gonna put 0, because I don't want the player to be thrown up. Another thing that we need to do is flip the player in the opposite direction when he jumps away from the wall. And use the same formula as I did previously to flip the x-axis, and for the y and z-axis I'm gonna type in transform.localscale.y and z to keep the same values as we currently have. That's it, you can go back into Unity and test how this works. Thanks to everyone for watching. In the next episode we'll make the player shoot fireball projectiles, so subscribe if you don't want to miss that. Also consider supporting me on Patreon because that would help a lot. See you on the next video, stay safe and keep making games.